Welcome back, or welcome, or whatever. So, we today I'm going to be painting cloth. We're doing a tutorial on how I paint cloth. Uh, we are back with Lanreal Grey Leaf from Reaper, the Dungeon Dwellers set. Um, and we're going to paint his cloak. We're going to paint it green. So, for colors I have, I have mossy green. Again, crap label, can't see it. Turf green, same thing, crap label. Meadow green, as well as retro emerald. I haven't used this one yet, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, brushes, I have two different brushes, but three of them. I have my small dry brush that hasn't been completely destroyed yet character get it to the center of the screen that would help and then my pretty much completely destroyed small dry brush these are all army painter brushes my personal favorite as of right now so I'm gonna start out with the turf green and I'm gonna lay down the base for his cloak some paint on our palette and if you watched the face tutorial this is going to be a little different because I'm going for coverage over being super clean so I'm going to take my small dry brush the non-destroyed one fill it up with some paint and go to town on this cloak again trying to get a decently even layer on it and I will probably do two or three layers depending um, so this is a metal mini I paint it exactly like I paint my plastic minis um, some people swear by uh, basing their minis before they paint them that's not something that I do just because I have no real reason. So yeah, I'm just trying to get coverage on this and not too worried about the hair, not too worried about his quiver or really anything else that's going on. As long as I don't paint over that pretty face that we painted earlier or in one of the other videos. All right, so I'm painting the front, but for this video, I will probably only focus on the back and not this front part or anything like that. Um, again, I will lay down my base colors on it just so that when I do get around to it, it's already there. Try not to get the face. Do, do, do. Paint, paint, paint. All right, so we have one layer on, and you can see it's pretty, uh, pretty striped. But letting this layer dry, and then laying down another layer, maybe two, maybe three, will help get it solid. get all of his under bits too. All right, so we'll let this dry. I will wash my brush, hopefully not be super loud again. And then we'll get another layer on there. All right, so we have our first layer dry. Go in with a second coat, see how that covers. Very nice. We 
remember it's okay if you need to do multiple layers I find that doing multiple thin layers always gives a better end result than a singular oops than a singular super thick layer I guess I could have cut all that out in post but that's fine that's fine minis fall it's not a big deal we'll recover that up now if I can only remember to stay in the frame that would be helpful this layer dry and we'll probably add a third just to even up these edges go in with our third layer and hope that the coverage will be good looks good so far now once this layer dries we will get in there with our highlights and our shadows This right here not so cool that's why it's important to let your layers dry before you add more paint onto them <coughs> me all right so now that that is dry we're going to add in some shadows for the shadows, I'm using Mossy Green. I'm sure you can totally read that label. From Reaper, put some on the palette. And I will be using my character brush from Army Painter. All right, there's no lid on there that I just tried to pull off. Nobody saw that, that's fine. It's not on video or anything. All right, I'm not going to use a wash for the shadows. I'm going to just paint them on and go in the crevices and just paint down. It helps to define your light source of where you want the light to come. So for this case, because of what we did on the face, having the light kind of come down from this way hit there and then this will be the shadow side again thin layers will do it just getting in all those little cracks pulling down just lightly I just realized that I'm sitting by a window and the sun just came through and uh, probably just washed out this whole video that's fine let's get some more roll and pull and paint down just getting in where you feel like the shadows will be you 
using this method too, as opposed to trying to use a wash, um, you can always go back with whatever the base color was and fill in or paint over or what have you any areas that you feel like maybe shouldn't have been painted. It also creates a bit crisper lines. And sometimes it's hard to control where a uh, where a wash goes. So yeah, just filling in these crevices. And then once this is done, let's get under there too. The shadow from uh, his quiver. Once this is done, we'll go in and add some highlights to it. using a similar method. All right, so we'll let these dry. Shouldn't take too long. Oh, I forgot the inside of his little hood. Let's get that boop, bam. All right, and again, I'm just focusing on the back side. I'm not worrying about the front at this point. We'll, we'll do all that later. But for right now, just focusing on the back and so you get the gist of how it is that I paint cloth. All right, so now that this is dried, we're going to go in with meadow green for our base highlight. Let me say base highlight because we'll do another one in a bit. But for now, let's get some meadow green on the palette. Again, with our character brush, get some on there, and then we will hit the high points of his cape. Clope, cape, whatever. Just small. Small strokes, going slow, not a race. Painting around some of the uh, shadows that we did. Trying to get the high points of where the light would hit. And again, why I like using this method is because I can go back and fix any shadows that I cover, or if I want to add more base, I can do that too. And I don't have to redo the entire bit. That is too much paint. All right. Getting the high points. Again, keep in mind where your light source is coming from. It'll really help with that that high effect. Right. So there is his cloak. We have our base color, our shadow, and our highlight, and we can leave it at that. But I like to take a higher tone. In this case, will be the retro emerald from Reaper, 
and I'll put it right next to our highlight color. The cat just jumped on my chair. She's currently yelling at me. So I've put it right next to our highlight color. And it's kind of bleeding into the previous highlight. So I'll take my small dry brush, the one that is destroyed, and I'm going to take it and we're going to add a little bit of dry brush to some of the tops. Make sure I get a nice thin layer on it. All right. And just as you usually would with dry brushing, and I can do a tutorial on that if you guys would like, um, I'm going to take it and just hit these top edges just to give it a more worn effect. Give some life to the cloth. Especially with this green because it's not quite the same tone of green. Um, it'll add an interesting worn look to it. Some of my paint was still wet, so again, just adds to the effect. Just a little bit, you don't want to overdo it or else it looks kind of cheesy. And that's not quite what I'm going for with this one. So it just brightens up those edges, brings it out a bit, makes it look like his cloak has been dragging the ground for a while. Um, and they didn't just get it tailored yesterday. Hitting the bottom edge mainly. Pulling up from the bottom and then brushing down from the bottom too. And then straight across from either side. And there we go. Awesome. Well, thank you for checking this out. If there's anything in particular you would like to see, please let me know and we can get that worked out. Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs>